Okay, so tonight starts Yom Kippur at sundown. It is the holiest of holy days for the Jews. It is also called the Day of Atonement. If you remember, the Jews were allowed, the high priest was allowed to go into the Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Covenant was, one day a year. That's tomorrow. If they had a temple, the high priest would be getting all gussied up and going in um, to the Holy of Holies, asking for forgiveness for the year for the nation's sins. But since there is no temple, that part isn't happening. So what they do instead is they have five synagogue services, prayer services tomorrow. So they will be in synagogue all day, pretty much. It is a somber day. Um, in fact, a lot of their things they do are so that they won't be comfortable. It's to be a day of not being comfortable at all. Um, they fast for 25 hours. Mm -hmm. There is no bathing, no showering, no lotions, no creams for a day. It's one day. <laughs> I thought, oh, yeah, but one day. Um, they are not allowed to wear leather footwear. It's like... Why not allow, why can't they wear leather footwear? And it's not an animal kindness thing because they can wear the leather belts and leather anything, carry their leather purses, but no leather shoes because leather shoes are considered to be comfortable shoes. So they can't wear, they don't wear leather shoes. So they all go by Crocs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They can wear their plastic <laughs> shoes or plastic leather. Or or, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just no leather. A lot of barefootness. On Would you be comfortable? Um, rock. Traditionally, they wear white because white symbolizes holiness and it's the holiest day of the year. Um, no marital relations for 25 hours, which most of us would say, but that's okay. <laughs> do they confess their sins? They do. But between last week's Rosh Hashanah and mm -hmm. Yom Kippur, that, this has been a whole week of atonement. Mm -hmm. A week of asking for forgiveness. And today is the last day, so if you had something against someone else or some, someone else has something against you, you're going and trying to straighten it out today. Mm -hmm. Because tomorrow, they consider it to be the day that your name is either written or taken out of the book of life for the year. It's a yearly thing. So um, so they want to make sure they're in the right place to have their name written in that book. There is no working at all. In fact, in Israel, most of the businesses shut down. There are no television broadcasts, no, no radio, no that's, nothing. They shut down Israel. You know, um, is that still today? It apparently is still today. And that's for the whole week or just for... Just for the 24 hours. 25 hours. Oh, Guess for so Yom Kippur. Cool. Um, so, so, so if, some, um, if one of the nations wanted to attack them, like, yeah. or remember the Yom Kippur <laughs> War, 1970 something. Uh, That's what they did. Oh, they, they the Egyptians and, and Syrians attacked Egypt, Israel on Yom Kippur. Don't know if it was with a plan of thinking. They're not going to fight back. No, but, they fought back. But they did. They, they did fight back. And they won, I think it was six, six days war. This one wasn't the six-day war. This one lasted about a month. Oh. And, it, and it wasn't a real decisive win on either side. In fact, Israel ended up giving up land in oh. negotiations. But, um, but, again, they were attacked on Yom Kippur. Like, oh, now. Yeah. So, because starting at sundown, they can't eat for 25 hours, what would you do right before that? Eat. <laughs> have a... <laughs> they have feasts. They have feasts. They have... They 
get all their eating out because they have to be strong enough to last 25 hours. I mean, 25 hours. I could last 25 yeah. hours. Yeah. <laughs> um, pretty well. <laughs> so then at tomorrow night at sunset ends Yom Kippur. And they end it with the Shema, which is the the love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might. Mm -hmm. That's the Shema. So they end up with everyone shouting that. And then the shofar blows oh. one time. Mm -hmm. And then it's party done. Another feast. <laughs> Another Actually, feast. what comes up right immediately after is Ooh. the um, Feast of Booths or Feast of Tabernacles. And that's the one where they have to kind of camp out for the week. Everyone builds a booth. And they pretty much, they pretty they just eat in the booth. Not everybody goes out and sleeps in the booth. But they, they have their meals in the booth. I saw a picture of a modern city with booths built out on the sidewalk. Um, so for seven days, it, that's party time. That's just having a, a, a fun time. Um, it's one of the three festivals where it's a pilgrimage festival where every able-bodied male was to go to Jerusalem to worship. Um, obviously not something that happens today, but there is still um, people that build their booths. Now, a lot of this is for Orthodox Jews, um, your everyday Jew that doesn't really, you know, they're Jewish by birth and not by their religion. They may not do that, except apparently everyone does Yom Kippur. You can't call yourself Jewish and not do Yom Kippur, apparently. And there was a thing on St. George News where the Jewish synagogue here mm -hmm. was having services and people oh. Other Jews who weren't part of the synagogue could come, so uh -huh. I would assume those would be the non-practicing uh -huh. Jews that they were inviting. I didn't know we had a Jewish synagogue. I, well, I, I don't, wouldn't say maybe it's a synagogue, but they have a meeting yeah. place. They have yeah. a rabbi here in St. Really? George. I didn't well, yeah. know that. Ooh. For a while they had, I don't know if they have two or one, for a while it was a woman. But yeah. now this one was a guy, I think, that was... It was, it was interesting. I was watching... On Netflix, the movie "You're You're So Not Invited to My Bat oh. Mitzvah," <laughs> and the rabbi in there. Well, it's a rabbi couple. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, so they have women rabbis now. It oh, seems like that would be so against the Old Testament. It, it's the first time I knew I'd heard of women rabbis, but yeah. so so interesting. Maybe here in St. George, they might yeah. have an Orthodox, and they may have a Reform. Yeah. Jewish, yeah, maybe. maybe the reform and, and the, yeah. the uh, Orthodox. But. So, if you want to observe Yom Kippur, eat really good tonight and then fast for 25 hours. And put away your leather shoes. <laughs> so, this, this um, Jewish convert to a Christian, do they also it's practice Yom yeah. Kippur? Christians? Mm -hmm. Not so much. It, it's part. not that... I mean, it wouldn't be a bad thing no, to do yeah. because you're, it brings your focus on God oh, and, and, and asking for his forgiveness. Now, we know we don't have to limit it to one day a year. Right. Um, it's something we should do pretty continuously. If, if we have a problem with our brother or sister, we should be taking care of it when it happens, not not one day a year, to try to get our name in the Book of Life. Our name's there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, or, and on Tuesday, can all go out and build a booth and live in a booth for a week. So, so. Okay, so let's go back to Deuteronomy. Um, chapter 4. Um, and I think I'll start with 41 through 43 says, Then Moses set apart three cities in the east beyond the Jordan, that the manslayer might flee there. Anyone who kills his neighbor unintentionally without being at enmity with him in time past, he may flee to one of these cities and save his life. 
Bezer in the wilderness of, on the tableland for the Reubenites, Ramoth for Gilead in the, in the Gadites, for the Gadites, and Golan in Bashan for the Manassites. So, these just about the three cities that the tribes on the east side of the Jordan have for their, their cities of refuge that if someone kills someone else, they can run to that. And it points out if you don't have a past of having a problem with that person. So that's something we haven't seen before. Um, has to be purely accidental. Um, now, you notice he's not, he, we haven't seen any cities listed in the promised land yet because they have to take the promised land first. Then they'll decide what cities. But they already know their well, land they have on the eastern side. And by the way, Golan is now Golan Heights, and that's in the Yom Kippur War. That's what Syria and Israel were fighting about. That area, still a, a land of, and Israel ended up giving that back to Syria. But so, forever they've been fighting over that piece of land. Okay, so forty-four through the end of the chapter. This is the law Moses set before the Israelites. Uh, these are the uh, stipulations, the degrees, and law Moses gave them when they came out of Egypt and were in the valley near Beth Peer, east of the Jordan, in the land of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Hezbron and was uh, defeated by Moses and the Israelites as they came out of the Egypt. They took possession of this land and the land of Og, king of Basha, the two Amorites king east of the Jordan. This land extended from Arar uh, on the rim of the Arnon Gorge to Mount Sarion, that is Hermon, and included all the Arab east of the Jordan as far as the Dead Sea below the slopes of Pisgah. Okay, so. 38 years since they first received the law at Mount Sinai. Um, and we get a list of um, where they went, what they conquered. Um, but the important part is that they're being told that they are going to have to be trained in God's word to get ready to go in the promised land. They can't do this under their own power. Is that still true today? So they're still waiting outside. Yeah, they're still waiting. <laughs> yep. This whole book is waiting. waiting. <laughs> yeah, it's it's sermons to get them ready. Um, so today we still can't do life right without without God. We need him. We need it, his power, because if we try to do things in our power, don't we mess it up. Okay, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. 1 through 5. Oh, yeah. Okay. Moses summoned all Israel and said, Hear, Israel, the decrees and laws I declare in your hearing today. Learn them and be sure to follow them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb. It is not with our ancestors that the Lord made this covenant, but with us, mm -hmm. with all of us who are alive here today. The Lord spoke to you face to face out of the fire on the mountain. At that time I stood between the Lord and you and uh, Lord and you to declare to you the word of the Lord. Because you were afraid of the fire and did not go up the mountain. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're in a little stop mid phrase. Okay, so this original co covenant, yes, it was presented to their fathers, but it's being stressed it's not your father's covenant, it's your covenant now. It's a living covenant, it's for whoever 
whichever Hebrew person is alive, it's their covenant. Um, in verse 2, the phrase made a covenant, in Hebrew, it's cut a covenant. Remember what they did when they had a covenant? Yeah, they would take an animal, cut it in half, and walk through the middle of it. So that they that's what they thought of when you said cut a covenant. Um, talks about seeing God face to face. Does God even have a face? No. He's a spirit. So it's just... Um, Called, again, called anthropomorphism, where they give God human characteristics because it helps us understand. So when it says he met them face to face, it meant he had a conversation with him with them. They didn't actually see his face. And this is where Israel was so afraid of God. That they begged Moses, oh, you please be the intermediary. Don't let us go face to face with God ever again. You do, you take care of it. Okay, so now Moses is going to repeat the Ten Commandments to them. Um, so a new term. The commandments are what are called apodictic laws. It's a that means a law that is in the second person. You shall, you shall not. It's generally commands, and there is no wavering from those commands. Most of the rest of the law is what is called cas casuistic or case law, meaning it starts with if something, ha if this happens, then this. So there, it's is more dependent dependent on things happening. So, um, verse 6. These are going to be short verses. We may go around five times with them. <laughs> so, verse 6. That's it? That's it? Yeah, that's it. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. Okay, so the most important thing to start all this off, I'm God. He declared who he was and what he had done for them. That's the foundation. Because of who he is, he has the right to tell us what to do. Have you ever run into people that say, no one has the right to tell me what to do? <laughs> Might have said it myself. <laughs> God does. Well, and then if you get stopped by a police officer, he does. Yeah. <laughs> There's people that get to tell you what to do, but God especially. Um, and he, who who else has more of a right to tell us what to do than God? And we know that what God tells us to do, He's telling it for our own good. It's when we, when we say, you can't tell me to do that. And that's when our life gets messed up. Um, David Thompson said, I don't want to gloss over this because it is critical chronology. Before God gave us his word and before God challenged us to obey, he saved us. Don't miss that. Any relationship with God starts with God's salvation. And him choosing us. Then come the commandments. It's not the commandments and then salvation. Because we can't earn our salvation. So this first commandment is going to flow naturally from that statement. Verse 7. You shall have no other gods before me. Um. So, in no way is this implying that there are other gods. Um, some people would try to try to use this verse to say, yeah, look, it says gods. Um, he's saying, don't try to bring these fake gods before my face. You're nothing. There are no other gods. 
failure to obey this commandment is called idolatry. So how does this apply to us today? Things that we love many days. I mean, we have some idol, what we prioritize in our life. Yeah. Easy, slow, we can come. Yeah, anything you put you ahead of God. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything that, that takes God's place in your heart mm -hmm. is a God. Okay, verse, oh, this is a big one, 8 through 10. <laughs> You shall, make, you shall not make for yourself any carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. Okay, so the last one was about the true God. This was about how to worship him in the right way. It's not just about making false idols, building little statues. It's also about worshiping anything. Worshiping God's creation instead of the creator. Um, their culture, everyone around them, they were so tied to, to idols and images. God does not want us to try to depict him. Try to make a picture of him. You, you don't find that very often. I think Michelangelo, you see something. Uh, God says, don't do that because he's spirit there. He has, how can you depict spirit? It's, it's just not something we can see. Now it doesn't necessarily mean they couldn't make, you know, it kind of, there's disagreement that doesn't necessarily mean they couldn't make artistic images, just not something to worship. I did look up to see if there's any famous Jewish artists. And Marc Chagall is Jewish. Um, most of the famous Jewish artists were, came out of Russia and Paris and um, Prussia around World War I. And most of their paintings are these, you know, kind of like Picasso looking type things. So they weren't doing a lot of images. <laughs> what is that? The icons. I mean, all the all the art history when you go, especially to Italy, you see it so much. Yeah, and it's just... with the Roman Catholic Church and the Russian Orthodox right. Church Which I and do the Greek became Garden. idols for them. Some obviously, it is. But... Yeah. In fact, in the Catholic version of the Bible, um, they kind of leave out this commandment. And they divide the Tenth Commandment into two. So that we can't use their Bible to say, see, you're not doing this right. Um, in fact, you know, as far as making depictions of things, God commanded them to make right. cherubim to go on the Ark of the Covenant. But don't worship them. But don't worship yeah. those things. Um so, talks about God's jealousy. And we think of jealousy as a bad thing. But God doesn't want to share our hearts with anybody else. Mm -hmm. He is jealous for us. Um, not jealous of us. He yeah. just wants us to worship him the right thing. Then it talks about visiting the iniquity, meaning making the sin fall on your, your descendants. It doesn't mean that God was pun directly punishing people for their ancestors' sins. It's more of the idea of you step in the footsteps of your parents. Do what your parents did. 
So it isn't that he punishes you for it, it's that for he knows that we're... You, we're you are likely to do just like your parents did. Um, if, you, if your parents hate God, you're likely to hate God too. But you have the... And then you have that iniquity on you. Mm -hmm. But you have the ability to break out of it too. Yeah. Each okay. person is responsible for themselves. Right. And the communism and what they put on a whole nation. Yeah. Or Yet when when communism was in effect, the church grew the biggest it, yeah. it could church grew under persecution. Same in China. Yeah. Where where the churches were facing persecution, they were growing. Where, yes. in fact, in chapter six, we'll kind of talk about that too. But here in the United States, things are so easy. And how is, yeah. you know, our churches? Well, we're getting little revivals. In fact, there's there have been things happening in some of the college campuses that have been great lately. I think so too. Yeah. Um, I think it's become more okay to talk about God and Jesus in your relationship. I just think yeah. about that God gets us that's on NFL. Yeah. You know, that's pretty amazing. I know. You this last week, it. I forgot what game it was. The, the Saints game. Yeah. Well, that um, makes sense. That, well, <laughs> I know. The Saints haven't always acted so saintly. I'm a Saints fan, so. <laughs> but they haven't always acted so saintly. But. Both quarterbacks were very strong Christians, yes. and the announcers were talking about their faith. Yes, that's amazing. And it was like, okay, <laughs> yes. that is am that's amazing. Yeah, that the, um, that is happening. It should be like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, and the Bible says near the end times there's going to be a great revival. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I also noticed when I was in California, how much there is young people. Yeah, and they. Um, Standing in front of the church, and they have, you know, board. Welcome to the church. And yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, it was so nice. Yeah. And but they are under persecution there, much more than us here. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. They going and mm -hmm. protest, and I mean, yeah, the government sending and things like that. Okay, let's go on to the next one, verse eleven. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Okay, how do we take his name in vain today? Maybe in the way we talk about him. Not just using his name in vain, but the way we yeah, that's defile it. him, I guess. Yeah, well, that's it. The people. Well, OMG. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And I know in my the country there are lots of cursing in God's name. Lots yeah. of curses. Nope. I don't know who. So. David had a friend that was using God and Jesus and his cursing. And David said, told him, don't be talking about my God, about God that way. Don't let me hear you say that. <laughs> so they mm -hmm. stopped. But any other ways that we... Take his name in vain. The way we act. Mm -hmm. Say we're a Christian and act a different way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Disgrace. Mm How -hmm. about, mm -hmm. I swear to God. Yeah. <laughs> I swear on the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, we don't need to. So help me God. <laughs> yeah, so help me God. Yeah. Yeah. While you're still, have your fingers crossed behind your back. It's. And this is a commandment that the rabbis took to an extreme. They like to take these things to extremes. They wanted to make sure they were not breaking these commandments at all. So they they even refused to write out God's name. Um, and because they were afraid if they wrote his name on an object, a piece of paper or something like that, that paper might get destroyed. And that would be taking God's name in vain. In fact, I was reading an article on on uh, Yom Kippur, and every time God came up, it was G dash D. So it's still something they do. So, <laughs> yeah. And as it's where the rabbis were so concerned about not doing things physically, this is about the heart. Yeah. It, 
God didn't say you can't write my name. Right. But you better write it in a, in the right way. You better, if you're using his name for an oath, it, it's yeah. that's Again, the heart a binding. Is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to read 12 through 15. Yeah, I got a big one too. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. Excuse me. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock. Or, any, or the soldier who is within your gates, that your male servant and your female servant may rest as well as you. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. So, the day itself... There's nothing special about the day. All days are equal. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Equal. What makes it a day holy is it being set aside for mm -hmm. a particular purpose. In this case, worshiping God. Yeah. And this rest. Is there anybody that didn't make the list? On who ne who needs to have this rest? <laughs> it was animals too. Animals. <laughs> who, there's no one that doesn't make this list. Our bodies were created to need rest. Animals need rest. Um, a lot of people miss this. Mm -hmm. It's about it, women are included in this. The, God gives dignity to women. Women aren't to slave away on the Sabbath either. In a male-dominated world, how many how many cultures would have the women slaving away on on a whole, every day, twenty four seven? But no, God says they rest too. They need rest. It wasn't just the free Israeli men that needed rest the slaves the other people with them everyone this was such a radical concept in the, in their culture around them of course yeah and also um, on the seventh day God rested mm -hmm. and um, he calls us to that rest that yeah. this um, we're living in is a day of rest mm -hmm. for God's yeah. people. Are, we still need rest. And of course, the rabbis took it overboard again. Um, remember, they had rules we talked about before that you couldn't carry any something in your right hand or your left hand across your chest or on your shoulder, but you could carry it on the back of your hand um, or on your foot or on your elbow, in your ear, in your hair, or in the hem of your shirt, in your shoe or sandal, just not in your hands. Otherwise, it was work. Do you see God saying anything about that kind of stuff? No. No. Um, so while, yes, God designed our bodies to need rest, this is also a picture of the rest we find in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um, so why don't we observe Sabbath today? You know, how many, how many of us come to church on Sunday and rest? <laughs> it's not a day of rest for, for a lot of people. You have to get dressed <laughs> um, didn't God command it though um, Colossians 2 16 and 17 and Galatians 4 9 through 11 both say that God Jesus fulfilled the purpose 
and the plan of the Sabbath in us and for us. Mm -hmm. The rest that we enter into with Jesus is not just a one day a week thing. Mm -hmm. It is an everyday rest that yes. we have. Yes. I think it's a rest when we do our Bible study every day and we're mm -hmm. in the Word. Mm -hmm. It really is. And, and what we do with the other time is as important. Mm -hmm. Are we honoring God and are we working with and doing things and not just yeah. Playing around. <laughs> I know Pastor on Wednesday night, um, he was talking with the, the later class about keeping a journal of what we do in yeah. a day and it's like oh, and to see no. what we do and it's like I don't I already know I waste so much time. <laughs> it's no. like I don't need a journal to tell me that. Yeah. But um, also this is the only commandment not repeated in the New Testament. You don't find a commandment saying, keeping the, talking about keeping the Sabbath holy in the New Testament. But our bodies are still created to need rest. And the world knows that. That's why in most of the world, there is a work week and time off. Yes, there's some people that kind of don't, you know, through circumstances don't. You know, my son-in-law works so much overtime that, you know, he, he works like three weeks in a row. So his rest is not happening. But the world knows our bodies need rest. I know. And, 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 and you know, I also call this. Well, in a sense, it was alluded to in the New Testament when the disciples plucked the grain and Jesus said that was okay. Yeah. So. Well, was, so I guess the negative of having to keep the Sabbath was there having to keep the Sabbath in the way that, that the, the rabbis, rabbis wanted, wanted it. it. Because you, you, can, you can bet Jesus went to the synagogue on, yeah. on Sabbath day. But he wasn't paying any attention to all those extra rules that they, they added. Okay, verse 16. <laughs> Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live long and that it may go well with you in the land of the Lord your God is given you. This is essential for a society. A society where younger generations are at war with the older generations, that society is in a mess. Um, that's the idea of, and this is a command Toward a nation too, that your your nation may prosper if you respect the elders. It, remember, I think it was Timothy Leary who was the one that said, "Don't trust anyone over 30 when we were young. When was it? Oh, that was in the the no. hippie movement. Yeah, part of the hippie yeah. movement, beatnik hippie I movement. Wasn't here. Yeah, no, you weren't here. It was. It was a. <laughs> you were over there. Yeah. There was, there was, oh no. Was, yeah. Was it was a big deal to, to, to. They were trying to inundate the young, separate the young people from the old people. Don't trust the old people. They're yeah. And we're we're now those old people. <laughs> we were the ones under thirty, and or maybe, and now. <laughs> Lot of respect don't trust us. Yeah. Way of, of, well, and again, we, you know, our generation had a big part of that, but it built on the generation before had things, and the generation. I mean, it's been building, and now we've come to this it's generation <laughs> that is, you know, it's the iniquity of our sins keep getting passed on, and they get worse. Well, I always say to my grandchildren. You need old people, their experience and wisdom, and old people need you. Mm -hmm. I mean, telling for myself to them, because they need your strength and help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they agree with that. So yeah. And God and God knows that we need this. We need yes. older and younger. Right. So yeah, if we're if we're only a, an older generation, we die out. Yeah. I know there have been some churches that have purposely set themselves aside to be an older church, mm -hmm. and they're they're dying. There's no yeah. We need 
a combination. Well, we were actually going to a church before we came here, and uh, that pastor's uh, feelings was that he didn't want the old people. He wanted the young people, and he mm -hmm. made it very clear so, uh, that the old people meant nothing to him. He needed the young people. Oh, and that's wrong, too. Well, yeah, well, yeah. Right we need every, the yeah, Bible found, says let the, the older yeah. pretty much let the older yeah. people yeah. teach the younger people yeah, right. yeah. 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 the older people keep it running fiscally probably oh that, that's a big right. part of it too yeah, yeah. But, and yeah. I had heard that um, you didn't have a purpose anymore mm -hmm. that God like essentially he couldn't mm -hmm. use you anymore mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's not true. And there, you you don't see retirement in the Bible. There's no retiring from God's work. <laughs> yeah. Can't work anymore. I mean, in fact, in fact, I after I retired, I, I started thinking, how did I ever have time to work? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and there is a place in the Bible where it says that the gray hairs shall yeah, take care I of the children right. mm -hmm. while the adult while the parents work and then, I mean that, there is something in the Bible that, yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. we we need all generations right. God created Nobody us with all that. generations we need that and I listened before um, Dr. Charles Stanley he passed mm -hmm. uh, but now his uh, successor he said he has they have there lots of old people and he said that all people are one who are more faithful, more stable, more paying yeah. tithes and prayers and, uh, you know. Yeah, they're, they're a stability layer, but we need every other layer. And, yes. and our layer of stability <laughs> needs to teach the younger so that they become the stable. There, yes. there was a time in this church since we've been here that there were no children. Mm -hmm. There were no young people. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it was a terrible uh, time of, uh, I mean, we we prayed so hard for young people to come to this church to hold the elderly people realize what was happening. We yeah. were dying out and there was no young people. Uh, and we would have people come with children and they would say, well, we can't be here. There's no children. There's nothing. You guys aren't doing anything for the, you know. It took a while yeah. after we came yeah. to stabilize the church. And thank you, Jesus. It's stable now. Yeah. But you, the people that weren't here before cannot realize how, we, how much we adore and love our children in this church because we know we we realized one time we went through it yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a sign of growth to have families yeah. with children yeah it, it, we'll, this church could have very easily died out yeah. uh, at one point how many years but, ago like seven years uh, well we've been here um, uh, we've been in this church about um, 18 years probably 18 years so it's been within that 18 years it's been about 15 years ago mm -hmm. this church was just absolutely dying mm -hmm. it's and interesting then, because there were children because I came 23 years ago and and the church had children and I found mm -hmm. they still have them mm -hmm. now as adults with their own children but yeah. um so something must have happened in, in the winter yes yeah uh, our teenagers left and, yes. and grew up and went. Mm -hmm. uh, they had been the children in the church, and and all and all of a sudden we realized there's no children in this yeah. church. There's yeah. no young people in this, and it's not easy to get people to work with the kids. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, but you have to have kids to have people to work with them. You know. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we. We've seen it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Know, it's uh, yeah. dying out. And actually, how it came back. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. 17. Short. Super short. You shall not murder. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and this is not, we've talked about it before, it's not about capital punishment. The government has 
responsibility to do what the government needs to do. Some governments choose cap to do capital punishment, some don't. But God gives the power to a government to do that. In fact, sometimes, you know, we see God say, if there's a murderer, kill them. Mm -hmm. um, it, there, but there's a difference between killing and murder. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, what is different? Killing can be accidental. Killing it can be in war. Mm -hmm. Murder is to um, kill someone with, um, like premeditation. a hate. Yeah, premeditation and malice. And malice. Oh. Um, yeah. In Matthew 5, Jesus connects this with the heart, saying, if you think about murdering someone, yeah. you've done it. You've done it. So is this something we're guilty of today? I have to say there's times I think, oh, what would it be like? <laughs> but, yeah, so that I'm murdered in my heart and I have to repent of that. But, um, so verse 18. That's Neither Shalt thou be a false witness against oh, wait, that's, me? Oh, eighteen. 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 Does that mean you have to do it? Do you see any any excuses in here? No. None. No, just so. Um, this is about unfaithfulness mm -hmm. to a commitment you've made. Michael English, I, I used to love his music. I he, do too. <laughs> but he lost his recording contract and his marriage mm -hmm. over adultery with another Christian singer. And he said, maybe God let this happen to make me see I needed some freedom. What? <laughs> maybe God let this happen because I needed to see I need freedom. I no. Mean, Peter's let him come back and sing with him, so I'm thinking he may Maybe he, maybe he, so it straightened him out. <laughs> He's returned. Yeah. Um, this is one that's repeated in the New Testament several times, especially Galatians 5, 19, and Jesus talks about it at the Sermon on the Mount mm -hmm. because it's so important to maintain a relationship that you've made a commitment to. Because if you don't maintain that relationship, you've made a commitment to a relationship with God. What's to keep you from maintaining that relationship if you give up on an earthly relationship so easily? So, and just a note, if you know someone that's been divorced or has committed adultery, that's something in the past, they can be forgiven and go on and well, that's be right with God. Well, that's not for us to, yeah. to punish them over it. That, no. Because that's God's place. That's that is. God's yeah. yeah. Between them and God. Yeah. Not us. Yeah. Okay, verse 19. Another long one. <laughs> yeah. You shall not steal. <laughs> okay, another foundation for society. Um, it's, it also establishes the right for, to personal property. If, you, if God didn't allow personal property, there would be nothing to steal. Yes. Um, of course, we can also steal from God. We're to, we're to honor God with our financial resources. Um but Ephesians 4.28 gives the solution. It says, Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. So don't steal. Go work. And you give to other people. Mm -hmm. Verse 20. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Okay, so false witness is also slander and other 
like other translations. It's a it's a lie that you invent and spread with intent to do harm. Mm -hmm. um, it can also be when you are in a conversation and someone else is slandering someone and you do nothing about it, that you just let it go. Hearing, hearing a lie about someone else and not speaking up is also a sin. Yeah, I know it's hard. Because it's, you it's really hard. You hear people who gossip and then you, you kind of listen to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's one of the tough things. It's real easy to sit there and listen to and someone saying something about um, a guy named Red Path he said what a startling startling revelation it would be if a tape recording could be played of all that every church member has said about his fellow members in one week wow. yeah <laughs> it, it could be scary and it, it could be really hurtful to hear your your brothers and sisters saying bad things about you. The Bible makes it clear, if you have something against someone, go speak to them. Don't go speak to everybody else. You speak to them. Or keep your mouth shut. Yeah. But it's hard. It's real easy. Gossip is one of, I think, the easiest sin of them all. Okay, verse 21. And you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, and you shall not desire your neighbor's house, his field, or his male servant, or his female servant, his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. Okay, to covet means to pant after, yearning to have what someone else has. It doesn't mean to admire what someone else has um, and say, oh, I'd like to get that. It means... You just like really, really, you focus on getting that. Um, Ephesians 5.5 5 ties this last, this commandment closely with the first commandment. It's a, where it says, for this you know that no covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. So if you're coveting something, you're making that thing an idol. So it's going back. You can't covet things and obey that first commandment. I'm going to read verses 22 through 27 because that kind of finishes up this section. These words the Lord spoke to all your assembly at the mountain out of the midst of fire, the, cl the cloud and the thick darkness with a loud voice, and he added no more. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone and gave them to me. And as soon as you heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, while the mountain was burning with fire, you came near to me, all the heads of your tribes and your elders. And you said, Behold, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. This day we have seen God speak with man, and man still live. Now, therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord our God any more, we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that has heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of fire as we have and has still lived? Go near and hear all that the Lord our God will say and speak to us all that the Lord our God will speak to you and we will hear and do it. So imagine the scene. God is speaking with fire, a cloud, thick darkness, a loud voice. Um, don't know if it was an audible voice. And they are panicking, thinking we're hearing God. And no one that's ever heard God before has ever lived. So we're going we're gonna to die. Um, and they don't want to die. So they say, Moses, you, you take care of this. You, you be the go-between, we because we don't want to die. Um, and it's kind of interesting that 
He keeps saying, and you, and you, and you. Other than Caleb and Joshua, is there anyone there that was the, part of that you? <laughs> it's all their older generation, but it still applies. You as a nation. And this is the nation you've inherited. You as a people did this, and you are that people. And hopefully their parents would have told them about this. They've, they've been... The parents were commanded. We're, we're going to hit that again in, I think, chapter 6. The parents were commanded, teach your kids. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so they were afraid to approach God. But we live under a new covenant where God's message isn't stay away. It's come to me. And like Betty said, isn't it great we live on this side of the cross and we can come to him? So that's a great place to finish for this week. So.